One day I was walking down the street and I saw this sign that said, nobody cares. So I took a picture. But what moved me about it is that when I was a kid, I had a boss that used to tell me that all the time. Whenever I had an excuse, whenever I had a complaint, he would say, nobody cares. I'm thinking that's what it's all about. You know, like take responsibility for your own actions. So I just take pictures, you know, I'm seeing the guys work all over the city throughout the years and I just take pictures to Instagram it. Fast forward to a few weeks ago and I'm walking around Scope Art Show and what do I come across? These two big paintings that look familiar to me. Cause I've never seen actual paintings. I've always seen these messages in the street. So I'm looking at the paintings and I'm seriously having this usual suspect moment. You know, like I'm starting to see Nobody cares, I'm seeing the eye, I'm seeing the crown, I'm seeing the color. And I'm sitting here looking at this painting kind of like, oh word, this is the guy, because I, I never knew his name. Turns out the guy's name is Nobody. He gave us a conversation and here it is. Can you uh, just start by telling me your name and what it is that you do? My name is Nobody, T-M-N-K, the me nobody knows. And I'm a New York City graffiti street artist. I guess you might say a contemporary, contemporary painting. And can you break down what nobody knows what, what that represents? I began calling myself TMNK, the me nobody knows, because I didn't think I was any more different than anybody else, that there's a lot of nobodies out there that nobody knows. And I wanted to represent with my resilience and my determination that if a nobody like me could get discovered, make his art be heard, his voice heard, and anybody could. Uh, there's a lot of message in your work. Like, well, how did you get started? Like, what inspired you to get up and just start getting up, so to speak? Um, I'm not really, I didn't grow up on graffiti, but somebody I knew got murdered, and I was hanging out with a graffiti artist by the name of AV1, and he had an influence on me. And so while we were hanging out one day and this guy had got murdered, the first thing that came to my mind was that, you know, there's more of us killing us than cops or racists would normally get us upset, myself included, and nobody cares. It was just an epiphany that we had to start facing the reality that Afro-American males were killing Afro-American males at a greater rate than cops or any other racial form. And that pissed me off. But then I took that viewpoint further that there are more humans killing humans, there are more Americans killing each other than terrorists. And so while we're going overseas to look for terrorists, there's more murders happening here in the United States. And I began writing, allegedly writing, Nobody Cares, all over New York. Today, well, and I don't sit and say today, but you did a piece on the ground that said something to the extent that I am not the result of your ignorance or something like that. I am not defined by your ignorance. I also have allegedly write love over hate. And what I'm trying to do is inspire people to see the beauty in themselves like I see the beauty in me. I'm nobody. And I'm not going to worry about people telling me that my work looks like this person. I'm not defined by what others don't know. Your shirt on right now that you're wearing is black. I can tell you your shirt is pink and call it pink all I want, call it polka dot. That would be ignorant because your shirt is not defined by what I think it is. It's a black shirt. So no matter how many times I call it pink, it's not going to make it pink. I want others to realize that when someone calls you ugly or stupid or says hateful things, you don't have to waste your energy arguing with them. You're not defined by their ignorance. Keep it moving and do your own thing. So I guess somebody wrote in the street, they say it's me. I am not defined by your ignorance. I'm trying to leave a mark on humanity. You know, the streets aren't my canvas. Your mind, your soul is my canvas. And I'm trying to leave a stain on your brain, so that's what I do. So as far as how you sustain your art, um, do you do business or how, like how did you how did you actually become, you know, to the point where you could show in art shows and things of that nature? Was it over time or did they approach you or did it just wasn't I never thought of it as doing business. I it may sound gratuitous. Somebody I know got murdered. I have an eight-year-old son. And up to then, I thought my biggest job was protecting and providing for him. But I began to realize I could protect, provide, and send him to the best school. If I don't take time out to care about the cat on the other side of the street that nobody cares about, then one day that kid who grew up without somebody caring could cross paths with my son and not give a fuck, pull a gun on him and murder my son or murder my mother. To me, the only antidote was to take time out 
to send messages of caring, but also care about somebody on the other side of the track. So I really wasn't trying to sell art. I was trying to leave a message, to have a conversation with generations yet unborn. But the street art thing took off, galleries got in touch with me, and I'm selling paintings. I have to support myself, support my family. And so it never was about selling paintings. It was more about leaving a legacy for my son, for my children. The crown people see in my pictures, a lot of people compare it to Basquiat. They think that I'm copying or I got inspired by Basquiat. I started using the crown and it didn't have anything to do with Basquiat. Me being ignorant, I didn't even know about Basquiat. But I did know that I was quitting a good paying job having formerly been hung homeless. And that one day, the only thing I would have to leave my kids was not this 401k, would be the legacy of my work. So my kingdom, would be the wisdom and the knowledge that I imbrued in my paintings. And that's why each of my paintings has three jewels on them. I have three children, Sienna, Xavier, and Salome. And while they may have grown up thinking that this nobody didn't care about them because I wasn't there through divorce and breakup, they've been on my mind every day of every minute of every day that I painted. And so in my paintings, they have the crown to let them know that when I was painting, I was thinking of them. When I was putting these thoughts out there to inspire you and the rest of the world, I'm leaving something behind for them. And that their dad, nah, he ain't a nobody. He's somebody who gives a fuck. So, I'm not gonna take up too much more of your time, but if there was a message that you could leave to the kids, or to people who needed to hear um, the message, like the, the point of this whole entire movement, um, what would that be? The message would be this. Inside of everybody, anybody, and especially you, is a gift that God put. There's something that you can do that no one else can do. There's a, there's a contribution that you can make to this world, but you gotta believe in yourself, and you gotta work at it every day, relentlessly, it'll be difficult. But I want people to see that if a nobody like me can come to the streets of New York, and several years later, not 10 years later, within five years, have his work exhibited around the world, to be up here in scope, then anybody can. Anybody can make a difference. Everybody can make a difference. And that's what I'm trying to do with my art is my weapon movement. There's violence in the world. I'm trying to say art is my weapon against ignorance. Art is my weapon against hatred. Art is my weapon against poverty. Art can change your world. It changed mine. Thank you. No jiggity. No. If you'd like to know more about TMNK or the Me Nobody Knows, that information is in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.